Lewis, what the hell happened? I just got an engagement letter from Ted Tucker. What happened was, it was the greatest lunch of my life. I mean, it went perfectly right up until I told him we couldn't sign him as a client because we had a conflict. And then what happened? He waived conflict. Lewis, he can't do that. It's not up to him. It's up to Reed Communications. Not anymore. What are you talking about? He bought them, Donna. I was sitting right there, pulls out his phone. Next thing I know, he buys a Fortune 500 company just as easy as ordering chicken pot pie, which he also did. I mean, they didn't even have chicken pot pie, but they brought it to us along with nine other impossible to find things. You wanna know why? Because I'm Harvey Specter. But Lewis, you aren't Harvey Specter, and you could have told him that at any time. Did you hear what I just said? They brought us chicken pot pie. Well, now I am bringing you something else. The name of Reed Communications in-house counsel, Harold Gunderson, and he just called me to set up a meeting with Harvey. He wants to set up a late lunch right away. But I'm stuffed. How does he eat so much and stay so thin? I need a nap. Lewis, focus! You cannot keep this charade up any longer. Harold knows that you're not Harvey. So you better think of something before this whole thing gets more out of control than it already is. Okay. I think I know what I'm gonna do. What? Thinking like Lewis got me into this. Thinking like Harvey is gonna get me out. Lewis, what are you doing here? Where's Harvey? I've been calling him all day. Harvey's not coming, Harold. I am. And here's what's gonna happen. You and I are gonna figure out a way to tank this deal. What? Why would we do that? Because Harvey doesn't want it anymore. But he just had lunch with Ted like three hours ago when they came up with this whole thing. Why would he change his mind? I'll tell you why. Because Harvey wasn't feeling himself today. So what, I'm supposed to just roll over for a man who doesn't even have the courtesy to come see me himself? God damn it, Harold, I don't like this either. He clearly thinks so little of you that you're not worth his time, but thinks so little of me that you are worth my time. Wait, did that track? Yeah, it does. Well, if you're so pissed about it, then why'd you come? What are you, an asshole? No one says no to Harvey Specter. Least of all you, and don't you dare show your face in our offices today looking for him, or by God, he will have me throw you out. Lewis, what happened to you, man? Are you his partner or his lackey? You know what, Harold? As far as you're concerned, I'm not his partner or his lackey. I am Harvey Specter. So you sign this cancellation, you get it back to us by tomorrow, or I will take that gun from your bluff, or I will call your hand, or I will take 146 other guns, and I will fire them at your face. Nailed that shit. Hello? Harvey, it's Harold Gunderson. Harold who? Gunderson. How many Heralds do you know? I didn't think I knew any. I worked at your firm for three years. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something. How'd you get my personal number? It doesn't matter, Harvey. What matters is you're running scared, and I'm telling you it's time to face up like a man. I'm sorry, what did you just say? I know you sent Lewis to run interference on me because you think Ted Tucker's overpaying for us. Back up a second, Harold. It sounds like you're a little mixed up. Am I? I know you had lunch with Tucker today. Lewis admitted as much when he came to me and said, as far as I'm concerned, he's you. He said what? He said he was you, but I don't care about him. I care about you. And what you're going to do is go back to your office so we can settle this. Harold, I do things on my schedule, so I'll be back when I'm back. And unless you want that to happen six months from now, you're gonna tell me everything that Lewis said, and you're not gonna leave out one word. Okay. Okay, I took care of Harold. Now, what would Harvey do? What would Harvey do? What would Harvey do? Oh, God, maybe it's a sign. Hello? Is this Harvey Specter? I need to speak to him immediately. Yeah, this is Harvey. Is this something for Ted? No, sir. I work for Harold Gunderson. I just wanted to let you know he's on his way over. Here? Yes, to your offices. He's actually getting off the elevator. I, I... Well, he can't see me in here. In fact, I'm not here. I don't know what that means, sir. But he's walking towards your offices as we speak. Well, I know I said I'm not here, but I can't see him. I don't know what to tell you, sir. He's 10 feet from you. He... Five feet, three feet. He's right outside your door. How can you know that? Oh, I'm sorry. He's on the wrong floor. Oh, thank God. Nope, wrong again. Headed straight for you. God damn it, make up your mind. You should be better, my phone. <laughs> Hello? Oh, my God, we better. I could see Lewis jumping out the window. <laughs> I thought our windows didn't open. No one stop him. He's got super strength when he's cornered. Hello? Have you ever seen a badger fight a tiger? Has a badger ever fought a tiger? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. What are you guys doing, making sandwiches? Lewis, it's Harvey. Harold's not coming over there. He's not? He's not. What the f*** are you doing with the secretary? <laughs> secretary that was Samantha she was pretending to be his secretary just like you've been pretending to be me where would you get that idea Lewis come on all right Harvey I'm sorry I should not have done it I mean one thing led to another 
Now I don't have a way out. Lewis, whoever it is, you just gotta come clean. Okay, Harvey. I will. That was pretty kind of you. I mean, after we almost caused the poor man to have a stroke. Hey, if you can't do something to cause Lewis to have a stroke once in a while, what's the purpose of living? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, what are you doing here? I'm here to come clean. Let me guess, you're pretending to be Harvey and Ted Tucker doesn't know it? How did you know? After I talked to Harvey, something just didn't seem to add up. So I called Tucker's office and I asked him to describe Harvey. And unless he shrunk five inches, put on 20 pounds, and his teeth doubled in size, it was you. What I want to know is why. Harold, if you found a million dollars in a duffel bag, would you do the right thing, or would you take it and run? Chance to be Harvey Specter fell in my lap, and I took it. But I can't let Tucker find out, which is why I'm asking you to play along for just one meeting. Why should I? Because you owe me. I got you out of prison. You did that for Mike just as much as you did that for me. Well, then I'll owe you one. Not good enough. God damn it, Harold. In the last six months, Robert Zane's name came down. I have a special master installed in my firm, and I lost managing partner. All I wanted was to get out of my own life and enjoy myself for one day. Please, Harold. I need this. OK, fine. I'll go along with it, but you owe me one. You ready? I am. Good. All you have to do, you go in there, you refuse to come to terms, and it'll all be over. It's not what I'm ready for, Lewis. You see, I realize that a favor from Harvey's definitely better than a favor from you. What do you want? I want an all-purpose IOU from him, good any minute of any day. I can't promise you he'll do that. Well, then you better get him on the phone, because in two minutes, I tell Tucker the truth. Then do it. What? You heard me. This is enough. I did what I did, and I am not ashamed. So you go in there and you tell him, or you don't. But I'm not going to be bullied by the likes of you, Harold. OK, fine. I'll go along with it. But under one condition, I want to come home. What do you mean home? I don't even know where you're from. Yes, you do. I'm from here. I want to come back. Is this a trick? You're going to change your mind again? No, Lewis. I won't, because I've never been happier than when I was here. I'll think about it, Harold. But what I got to do right now is go in there and end this thing once and for all. <laughs>